What's going on guys? So there's been some big changes to the Beast class. Let's get straight into it. So if this looks a lot different than the last time you've seen it, that's because it is. I have since switched out the PDB. I have taken out the Maytech. This is the FCHUB 12S. And I have installed in its place the APD PDB 500. Uh, I was always concerned with the 70 amp constant on the Maytech. And I was contacted by Matt Matt. 14, uh, I think it's Matt Matt 314. I'll put his uh, Instagram up here. Uh, he had notified me that he had seen probably three of these burn up in the past few weeks. Um, so that was all it took. I mean, I always had reservations with this one, but that's all it took. I decided that with a machine this large, heavy, and dangerous. I do not want it falling out of the sky because I did not put the proper components or components that are up to the task that I'm asking it to do. So the PDB 500 is a much stronger PDB. Now there was a couple of reasons why I went with the Maytac in the first place. Uh, the first one being that this had a half voltage pad and what that would have allowed me to do is place a VBAT wire onto this and to half the voltage to send to the flight controller. And what that would allow me to do is to read the full voltage off the batteries by only getting half a volt. Uh, these flight controllers can't handle the 12S voltage. They can only handle some of them 6S. So if we cut the voltage in half and then send it to the flight controller, perfect. That's great. Well, this one doesn't have that feature. I'm going to show you how to get around that using smart port telemetry off the ESCs. Um, the other thing that this one had that this one does not is a Pino switch. What that allows you to do is to have a component that is switchable uh, and on this particular build because we want to plug this thing in and walk away from it for like a mile um, it's nice to have the VTX on a powered switch the other reason why I want to do that is because I plan on putting a GPS system on this and while it's sitting and waiting for GPS signal I don't want it uh, burning up the VTX in the uh, process waiting. So uh, we're also going to rectify that. So I just want to go over some of the changes from the old PDB to the new PDB and why I made them. The major change that I made is I have wrapped the signal wires with the ground wire and this will keep the ESCs from desyncing um, because there's a lot of voltage and current running through these lines. So that will change that. The other major difference is this does not have the ribbon cable system, which is probably a good thing because now we're going to hardwire everything with decent sized wires here. So if we look at these wires, uh, I've got a 5 volt here. I've got a 12 volt here. This black one is a ground. Uh, these white ones, this is motor 1 through motor 4. And then this yellow wire is our smart port telemetry. This is ESC telemetry. They all kind of go through here and I'm sure in the tracings they are hooked together. And then this is our single output. We're gonna hook this to a TX pad on the flight controller and that is how we're gonna read our voltage off the ESCs rather than running a VBAT wire. So this will allow us to get our voltage to the flight controller without frying our flight controller because this is just a signal wire and the ESCs already know the actual voltage of the batteries. So that's a good thing. We're going to rectify that there. Um, and then the other thing we want to pay attention to is we've got a 12 volt and our 5 volt. Uh, one of these we're going to plow the flight controller with uh, our 5 volt wire and then 12 volt wire we're going to use that to power our VTX off a switch. 
this does not have the Pino switch on it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go with a aftermarket solution. This little guy right there is a real pit. And how we're gonna hook this up. So here we have, and I'm sorry, the lighting's a little harsh here. We're gonna hook our VTX power wire here. We're gonna hook our battery wire here. That's coming from this guy here. This will be our 12 volt wire here. Uh, next we have our flight controller wire. This is gonna go to a UART and I'll show you how I wired that in a moment. And then lastly, we have our ground wire and then this, this ground, we're actually gonna ground to the PDB. Uh, excuse me, we're gonna ground this to the flight controller directly and then the VTX is going to be ground to the flight controller on its own as well. So that's how that's gonna work. Uh, and this, this is, I mean, this is a really cool little device. It's pretty much just a MOSFET. So, you know, we got our, our ground and power into it. So we've got a ground and power into it. We control it with this. And then basically once we hit this center pin of this MOSFET, it allows power to go through and then sends power out to the VTX via this pad. So that's kind of cool. And then it's got a nice little LED wire Excuse me, it's got a nice little LED on it that'll let us know when it's powered up and not. Okay, so the changes on the flight controller I have made. This wire here, this is our camera wire, and you've seen this hooked up already. Um, the VTX wire you saw hooked up already. What I did do here is I've added the real pit right here. This is put on top of the barometer so if there is a problem with it screwing up the barometer readings I will let you know but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be fine how I hooked that up is I took a ground wire from any ground pad in this case I grabbed one from here next to the s2 wire ran that over to here the FC wire I have run from a RX 5 pad on the top of the flight controller and this is my VTX, this power wire. This goes here. The ground wire from this VTX wire, I have placed underneath, where'd I go with it? Okay, so the ground wire to this VTX, I have placed here. I'll just give you the undershot here. So as you can see, our VTX wire comes in here that's to our VTX and our VTX ground into a ground pad here so those are the only real changes that I've made to the flight controller wiring since you have seen this uh, the crossfire stayed hooked up as it was the camera wire stayed hooked up as it was the signal wires that we've installed on the new PDB are gonna go right here. This is gonna be our five volt in. This is gonna be our ground, our signal one, two, three, and four. And the only other wire that we need to account for is the telemetry wire, the smart port wire. So after hooking up, what are the six wires? Three, six. So after hooking up these six wires, we're gonna hook the seventh to an unused TX. So I believe where I'm going to go is right here to this TX1 pad. I believe that's going to be our best bet. So let's do that now. I want to pre tin all these and we'll have this ready to rock. For this, I'm using the 1.6 millimeter chisel tip. And we're just gonna pre tin quick.
Okay, so the way I want to do this is such a way that I can flip this to work on it. So I have the flight controller upside down, just like this, and forwards is this way. So I can flip this to work on it. So I'm just gonna hold it right there and do all our wiring here. And then once I flip it, this will kind of just fall right underneath here. Uh, I think something like that. So I think I want to take about a half inch off these wires. I guess it's like a haircut, huh? All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and strip and pre-tin all these wires and we'll come back and I'll show you hooking them up. So the first wire we wanna deal with is our five volt wire. So this wire here is our five volt. I'm gonna land that right there. Next wire we want is our ground. our ground. The next wire is our motor signal one, which is this guy. We want to make sure these wires are clipped relatively short because we're going on to very small pads. Okay, the next wire we want is our signal one, which is motor one. Motor three. Finally, motor four. Okay. 
Okay, now you'll see we have two wires left. Now you'll see we got two wires left. This one goes to the top of our flight controller, so we're gonna hold that off for a second. And then this guy, we need a TX pad. So this guy is gonna cross and we're gonna go to TX1 right over here. Which if we make a note of this, TX1 is the second hole in on this side. Okay, I've got that placed in a TX pad. I'm just gonna land that in place. So now that that is all set, we wanna make sure that none of these wires have bridged to the adjacent pad. And once we are all set with that, we can flip this flight controller into place by pushing these wires and folding them down underneath. So now that we have our, all our signal wires installed, the flight controller is placed back on the quad. All four corners are tied down. The last wire of those signal wires is the 12 volt wire. Uh, this is going to be used to power our VTX via the real pit. So we're gonna go ahead and solder this to the BAT Plus, which is right there. And as you can see, this is kind of a tight little area to solder. So just be aware, I actually think that I might go with the straight bladed tweezers. Yes. And that should just nest right in there. Just like that. The final component I want to install is a GPS. Uh, where I want to install this is on the top plate right here. And the thing about this is you can see there's an arrow here so we want this facing the front of the quad like this. So it makes sense to bring the GPS wire and tuck it underneath the top plate and then go to the flight controller from there. So if I kind of hold that in space, I can get a picture of how much wiring that we're gonna need. So I can safely take off at least two and a half inches of the supplied wire. How we wanna connect this, we need a five volt pad, a ground pad, a TX pad for this RX, and a RX pad for this TX, a DA and a CL. So starting with something that we've never covered before, the These pads here, the DA and the CL, are going to get soldered here. This is DA and CL, SDA and SCL. So we're gonna go ahead and pre-tin those.
and we're going to run our longest wires first. So where we're going to power this is over here. We got the five volt in the ground. So we want our black and our red wire. And with something like this, don't be afraid to strip off more than you need, pre-tin, and then choke them back. Okay, so we want our five volt wire. Place right here. So our five volt and our ground wire attached. Double check those. Perfect. I'm gonna run all these off to the side like that. Okay, so next we want our RX and TX wire. So this yellow RX is gonna go to a TX and the blue TX is going to go to an RX. So what I'm going to do here, because we're going to go up behind here to RX and TX3, I want to check wire length. Should be about that. So I'm going to cut off another half inch here. Strip and pre ten. Okay, so we want a TX, no, our RX goes to a TX. That is a next we need a TX wire into an RX pad. And then finally, we want our DA and our CL. So we're gonna start with the white one. This goes to our DA. Well, we wanna check our wire length. As you can see, our DA and our CL are right there. So I'm gonna off about this much. Okay. 
Okay, so lastly, we would like to connect the DI wire, which is the white. This is going to go to the SDA pad. And our CL wire is green. This is going to go to our CL pad. Okay, that is our GPS installed. Now what I like to do is wrap this guy up a few times to pull up all this slack. And if we have done this correctly, you can see that all the wires kind of clench together nice and nothing is pulled tighter than the others. Once we get this wrapped kind of tight, then we can go back over it and cinch it. Very good. So now that that's all set, we can place our flight controller back on again and cinch it down. Uh, still need to run the antennas, one off of here, one off of the crossfire, but I will do that when I put the top on and then once we mount the GPS. Um, this came with this shrink wrap. Uh, I left it so that I can easily just pull that off and put it back on when I want to remove the top because this is going to be taped down. I have installed the GPS on the back of the quad here. This is the top plate, top section. Here's the camera. Uh, arrow facing forwards. So there's an X, Y on this. And you kind of want to get it pretty straight. So now that that's set, uh, I'm going to install the antenna wire. This guy, we're just going to poke through the back here. Okay, once you get that through, take our lock washer and our captive knot and screw that down. Don't need to get too crazy with that. Then we can take our antenna and mount that. go antenna is mounted so when we put this on we clip our antenna in place we feed our camera wire through here and finally we clip our GPS in All right, next we wanna grab our motor and we wanna grab the four motor plates. Uh, we also wanna grab our screws and a three millimeter hex key and some blue Loctite. We wanna check these 
the way these sit, there's no top and bottom to them. There is, however, like an inside and an outside. This outside piece is kind of a protective bit. And then this inside piece, you can run like a zip tie through here to capture your wires. So this goes towards the center of the quad. This goes towards the outside. And what we want to do is grab our motor facing the wires towards the inside of the quad and go ahead and line up your screw holes and run your screws in. I'm just going to take a bit of Loctite and place that around each screw. Here, I just want to go snug just till I get all four screws lined in. And then once they're all finger tight, I will screw them in completely. These motors also come with a washer and a lock knot. I just threw it on there so we don't lose them. So once those are all finger tight, I'm gonna cinch these down and I'm gonna do an X pattern. Get those good and tight. And now we repeat that process for the remaining three motors. All right, once our motors are installed on the bases, uh, I suggest just taking a zip tie and throwing it through here to capture this wire in place. Uh, that keeps any stress away from this binding here and it still moves freely. So next we want to go into our parts bag and we want to find 16 M3 lock nuts, 16 of these. These are an M3 40 millimeter machine screw. And there are 16 of these kind of U-channel, uh, I think these are like aluminum extrusions cut down. Uh, anyway, there's 16 of those. We want four for each arm. Now, a special note on the arms. If you notice, one side has two holes drilled completely through it. And nothing on the opposing sides. So, we want to make sure that we have the holes facing up. So, the easiest way that I find to do this place the two screws through the back of the motor here and one of these u-channel pieces through like that place it on the arm again taking special note for those holes sticking up place that on like so and place the other guy opposite so it captures the arm Hold your screws in place and place two nuts. Okay, once you get those kind of taut, go ahead and put the front ones on, two screws through. And these don't don't run these all the way through, just run them a little bit so you can get that U-channel in place. Then once you get the second one lined up, you can run it all the way through. Put the secondary on, hold the screws in place with one finger, and run a couple nuts through. Once you have those in place, I use a vice grip, and this is a 2.5 millimeter Allen key. Vice grip, I just grab the bolt, 
and you can use a regular ratchet or a nut driver or what have you. This is just what I grabbed. And then run this down until it is snug. And I'm also gonna move in a cross pattern with these guys. Once you get these four screws tightened, we can repeat the process for the remaining three arms. For this next step, I kind of went ahead and did this off camera, but we've got these giant batteries and this thing uses two at a time. These are 6S batteries, so this is gonna be 12 cell monster. What I did here was it came with uh, kind of a XT60-ish plug. I cut that off and I put the AS150s on here. And if you look, uh, the batteries I outfitted with the female ends on both of them. And in order to make 12S, we need to go in series. So how that works, is if we were to go in parallel, we'd hook it up like this. So I would make a Y adapter for each, and then that would make one. And all that would do is just lengthen the capacity of these batteries, but we want to up the voltage. So what we want to do is we want to go in series. So we want to connect the negative to the positive and then plug the quad in with one positive and one negative of different batteries. To do that, I created this, and this is also the AS150s. This has a male end on one end and a male end on the other end. And the way this works, and this color wire doesn't really matter, it could be red, could be black, whatever. But how we do this is we plug the negative lead of one battery a positive lead of another and now when we check voltage here we're gonna get double the voltage of one, one battery is putting out so we're almost up at 50 volts um, so there's that that's how I'm gonna do this now to test this quad I'm not gonna jam the volt 50 volts through it quite yet I'm gonna take this guy and we're gonna hook the on the quad, I've got the male end here and another male end here. And the reason we put the male ends on the non-powered side is if you were to drop something, it's a lot easier to hit the male end than it is the female end. Um, so that's the, the better one to put on the non-powered end. The female ends usually go on the powered end. Throw this on here quick, just in case. Um, okay, so let's let's live dangerously. Um, let's hook this thing up to a full 50 volts and see if you guys get a nice video or not. Here goes. And that's having confidence in your soldering abilities. Nice. Now, we've got all that hooked up. We need to be able to charge these batteries. And we're not gonna be able to hook them up to our regular stuff because we got these massive uh, AS 150s on here. So the plan here is these are the Gen's Ace 60C 4000 milliamp uh, 
just for those of you who are wondering. No affiliation with these batteries. I have no idea how they output, but uh, Catalyst Machine Works says they're good, so we're going to go with that. So to set up a set of wires to charge this with, I've got these guys. These are banana plugs, and this is what plugs into my charger. And I'm going to make two charge plugs um, just because, I mean, I, I've set up so I can use these in series, but we're not going to charge them in series. We're going to charge them in parallel, and I don't have a parallel board. And I guess I could make that uh, Y system setup that I showed you uh, earlier. The reason I'm not going to do that is because these AS150 connectors are expensive. So I'm just gonna use one set of them. Actually, it's really half a set of each. Um, but if I were to do the Y adapter kind of thing, that's, I'm using a lot at that point. So I got these guys and what we wanna do here is we wanna size our wire appropriately to fit inside of this guy here. Okay, yeah, we're gonna try that with the 12 gauge wire. I think it's just a little too big, but we might be able to make something happen here. So to do that, I'm gonna use my 1.6 millimeter chisel tip that I've been using most of this build. And I'm gonna strip back a little bit of this. Probably a quarter inch. to rotate the ends to tighten these up and see if this will fit inside of here because these are going to get hot so if you notice what I had done was I cut a little less than one third of the wire off uh, that's going to make it a lot smaller and should allow it to fit inside of this and the reason that that is okay is because we're not running a ton of amps through this connection. So I am okay doing that. I wouldn't do this on, say, a larger build. Uh, I just think that's asking for trouble. So this is not something you would do on your quad. This is just to charge these batteries. What I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to cut these a little bit shorter, but I'm going to pre tin them first so this wire doesn't make a huge mess. And I might actually change tips to something a little bit hotter. Yeah, this is working. Slow, but it's working. Okay, so now that that's complete, I am going to cut, I think it's about that much off. And I'm also gonna cut it at an angle. Yeah, don't do that, that was stupid. Don't do that. I'm trying to shield the the end of the nips to not have this thing fire across the room and burn myself. So yeah, don't do that. So now what we're gonna do is take this guy and take this guy. And I'm gonna heat this up and feed this inside. I'm not gonna bother pre-tinning um, because we don't have much room inside of this. Uh, the one thing I am going to do is switch tips. So I'm going to move, and that really hurt, man. I'm going to go to a T15 D32. This is a 3.2 millimeter uh, chisel tip, and this will give me all the heat I need for this solder joint. And as you can see, okay.
we are. I'm going to repeat this. We're going to repeat the process with the ground. And if you notice, I didn't put the plastics on first. It's because we're going to cut these wires in a moment, so it doesn't really matter yet. Um, if you put the other end on first, it will matter, absolutely, so be aware of that. Just kind of work its way in there. And then add a bunch of solder to fill in the joint. And just give it a little bit to cool off before you go moving up. So now we need to determine how long we want these. And I'm gonna go about that long. So sorry I did that off camera. Um, uh, it's like 900 degrees in the garage and that took forever. Um, but anyway, I had to push this end through the back. This wire is too large to even fit this way. If we were to push it down, I can only get it like that far and then it kind of gets jammed up. Um, so 12 gauge wire is a little too thick for these. I would definitely use like a 14 or even a, maybe a 16, I don't know but I did manage to get them in there. Uh, I do have two more and I'm not looking forward to that at all. But carrying on, we wanna go and figure out next what ends we need. So like I was saying here, we've got the female ends on the battery. So we wanna take our AS150s and look for two male ends. So for these guys here, we want to strip back a good quarter inch, maybe a little longer. And we want to check the depth. So it's just a pinch too much. So what I'm going to do is pre-tin this and just cut the tip off of it once that's pre-tinned. there we want to make sure to put our end and this is like the female plastic end but the male end for the charger so this guy slips down there pop him in there and we just go like this so to do this I'm gonna apply heat to one side and just fill in solder on the other side till it's Nice and flat. And this, we want to not flow too much solder that we get any on the threads either. So we're almost done. Just so it's just so it's kind of flat across the top, and that's all we need. And we want to hold this in place. Oh, we don't want to do that. Take special care not to do that. Because this joint is so hot, it takes a little bit to cool off. And it's very easy to move in that stage of cooling off. So I'm just gonna hit this again quick with some solder, just to make sure that we've got a nice solid solder joint and not one that had moved. And just give it about two or three seconds. And as you can see, some of the solder started wicking down here. We just want to be careful that we don't get any on those threads. So I can set that off to the side. I am going to do the same thing here. I'm going to splice and pre tin and I'm going to rummage through the house and find another AS150 connector. So the trick with these anti-spark sides, I know I had shown this in an earlier Beast Class video, but go ahead and cover the anti-spark section 
this acts as a heat sink because if you don't, it will actually melt and negate the anti-spark feature. So we don't want to do that. Um, like it says, make sure to put your plastic part on first. Because, yeah. That's what happens when you work in a 90 degree garage. It's hot out here if you have not noticed. And if I have not mentioned. So, I'm just going to heat this guy. Until that's kind of flat in there and then filled. And keep something around to hold the joint together for a couple seconds. Very good. That's a nicely soldered joint. Okay, so I'm gonna let that set for a minute. This one should be cooled off. So what we do with these is we just take this and slide it up and then screw this into position. So all things good. Be able to take our battery and plug this in. Ow, don't touch that, that's hot. Woo -hoo! Uh, so there we go. Just don't do this with two ends. That's, don't do that. Uh, but so that's one done, and I need to make one more. So the trick that I found of these guys when you have this end installed on the wire is to take this guy. And these are just your standard wire crimps. So you're using these to push on the back side here in between the, the jaws of the vise. And the rubber is held back by the jaws of the vise. So if I can kind of show you with this, right, we're pushing, we're pushing here. The jaws of the vise are holding this. Just, just by pressure, and then you're pushing this into here. Once you get it to this point, and that thing's sticking out a little bit, then you can take a screwdriver, stuff it into here, and it actually does, does fit. This'll go right in there. And then you're reaching for the same point with the screwdriver. You're just connecting like that. And you wanna push until this pops out just a little bit beyond this little turn point here and that should be far enough uh, i will check it and let you know it's a royal pain i suggest stepping down the wire from a 12 gauge i know i had mentioned that earlier but uh, highly advisable to do that so this one's all set so now that we have one completed pair i can actually charge my batteries now woohoo and in doing this project, I ended up with a lot of female ends to the AS160s. I think I went through possibly four packages of them. So even the freaking connectors are not cheap on this build. But uh, having extra females is never a bad thing. Um, so now when I get my batteries or new batteries, I can just throw the female ends right on there. So that, that's a good thing. Ooh, that is hot. That is wicked hot. So this is 750 degrees Fahrenheit. And for those of you who don't know the conversion, that's 400 degrees C. Um, that is my favorite soldering temperature. It's not too hot and it's definitely not too cold. But uh, yeah, just be aware it's hot. It is hot. So make sure we didn't put too much in here. It looks like it globbed over. I hope that's just unburned flux. Also, don't blow on this. Um, you will add hairline cracks to it and it will fail eventually. So just let it cool on its own. Um, clearly it still has not cooled. Um, these big solder joints take a little bit. Should be good now. Yeah, so see how this globs up? Uh, we want to be careful of that. 
I think in this case we'll still be okay to run this plastic sheeting over it. Um, just something to be aware of when putting these together like this. So I still need to order one more to complete this set. So a very special note about these, if you're gonna be connecting these, I highly recommend you plug these into the charger before you plug these ends in. Because if you plug these ends in, do you see what can happen? Yes. Yeah, don't do that. So plug these into the charger first. And I know I said I was done installing components, but I was just rifling through my stuff and just noticed a spare buzzer. You might ask yourself, why am I putting a buzzer on a beast class? And my answer to you is this. Have you ever dropped a quad in a cornfield? Have you ever walked in a cornfield? No. I haven't either. But in the event that I do, I will have a buzzer on my quad so I can get it back. Um, I've also dropped, well, I have dropped quads in large overgrown fields and it is no fun trying to find a quad five inch in four foot deep of grass. I know this is a little easier to find, but I don't want to spend any more time in four foot deep of grass than I have to. So GPS will get me close and the buzzer will put me on it in a minute. I'm just pretending these pads here and because of the nature of this being hard to get to, I'm just gonna pretend quick and land wires. This is a three wire system. Installing the ground wire now. This is uh, all the way to the right. If it decides to stay, there we go. So that's ground. Now I'm gonna switch this to the other side. Hold. Our next wire is the 5 volt wire. That'll be our red. And finally, we got our crystal pre tenant. This is our buzzer negative. Okay, so now that that's attached, we've got our ground wire, our five volt plus wire, and our buzzer native wire. To mount this thing, they give us this stuff. I, I don't know what it's made out of, but it's uh, a very, very sticky glue. And we just put that on there, like so. And then once we find a place to put this, we'll rip the other side of that off. Now, knowing where we're gonna install this, we need to figure out where the actual unit can go. Uh, the way I have this set up, it can flip this way. So what I think I wanna do is run the wire straight back and maybe I'll put this right up front here, uh, matching this. The other thing I could do is put it on top of here. And the reason I'm not gonna do that is because this thing gets crazy hot. So I don't want to put this on top, uh, not because I'm worried about the battery, but because I'm actually worried about the sticky substance. I don't want this thing falling off. It kind of negates the purpose of having it on there in the first place. So we've got that. So I'm just going to place this right here. And if in the future we need to, I can just run a zip tie over the top of it in between these wires and that will help capture it. 
So, that that's there. I'm going to loosen and remove the flight controller. So I can run the wires underneath and cut them and solder them in place so that we can still work on this flight controller without having to worry about wires being too tight taking it apart. So something like that, that means I am going to cut off about an inch of these wires. And we're gonna strip and pre-tain them all. Our first wire, we're going to land in the five volt pad Next, we want to install our buzzer ground, which is this blue line. The buzzer negative. guy in place with that. Perfect. And anytime your wire is a little bit long like this, I usually tend to cut them. Just trim it down close to the board like that. And finally, we need our negative wire. Which is going to go to here. And again, the same thing here. I just cut a little bit of slack off that. And that just keeps it from digging into any components or wires in the future. So that is our buzzer installed. And I'm putting this back. I just wanna make sure that all our wires are inside. And like you can see this one here, barely is getting kind of caught in between the flight controller. So that's good. The one thing that I didn't do is twist these. And I usually like to do that, but in this case I didn't. Um, I could rip this buzzer up and twist it, but I'm not gonna go ahead and do that. Perfect. So now, if that's installed correctly, perfect, that's installed correctly. So I don't know that they all make these noises like this. This is new to me, but I guess it's just letting me know, hey, I'm here. Uh, my other ones don't do that, so this must be a newer model. Uh, but it is what it is. So anyway, to 
activate it, we just turn it on. Right now it's charging off the battery. And if I were to hit the buzzer switch after this is set up, then it will go off. Um, if I unplug it or the batteries eject, I'm gonna get that little chirp out of it. And that's gonna to continue to chirp for I think like 30 seconds or a minute. And then it's gonna get loud and it'll last, I believe up to two weeks now with the newer style. Um, it'll beep every 10 seconds and then every so often the battery starts draining down. So it will beep less and less as time progresses for I think two weeks. And that's how to disable it. Um, the other nice thing too is if you have like a wonky battery connection or your battery is going dead, if it, you know, your battery's connecting, disconnecting, connecting, disconnecting, this has an algorithm inside of it that knows when that is going on. So it will not disable this prematurely. Wow, we got a lot of work done today. So pretty much just got to put the arms on and solder on the ASCs. Um, probably one more video. That to me is great. This is a long, long project and I'd like to get that thing in the air very soon. Uh, so yeah, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click that thumbs up button. And if you haven't done it already, like I think 85 to 90% of you have not, go ahead and punch that subscribe button because you only get to do it once and it's fun and I'll catch you later. Peace. Yeah, yeah.